Well, actually the timeline, my mother said that my daughter told her that I touched her while, it, while I was at rehab in September, because I, then I was also arrested. I was arrested October 1st for the sex charges. And I was at rehab for the half end of August and all through September. And while I was gone, she said that's when my daughter had made that statement. But then when I came home from rehab, she let me have my kids for two weeks and never said anything until after me and her got in an argument. We are about to watch the parole hearing of a cockroach mother who does the unfathomable to her biological three-year-old daughter. What's also unique about this hearing is we see her mother come up and make a statement. And we also see her stepmother come up and make a statement. And the contrast is vividly unique. With that, let's jump in. You know, it's 705796. You are a second class offender. Um, indecent behavior with juvenile, bank fraud, possession of methamphetamines, simple burglary. Uh, sensing date, December 1st, 2015, revoked on August 28, 2017. February 18, 2016, revoked on June 15, 2017, and March 6, 2018. Uh, seven years uh, suspended, five years probation, concurrent, five years hard labor, suspended, five years probation, concurrent, five years hard labor, suspended, five years probation, five years hard labor. Parole date, March 17, 2019. Uh, your good time date is 11-17-2023, and your full term date is 1- 13 2024. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. All right. How long have you been down on a seven-year sentence? I have been down three and a half. And you uh what's your uh, what's the status currently right now? You, what do you do in the facility? Do you work somewhere? Do you trustee? Uh, what do you do? Yes, sir. At first I was working in the beauty shop, but now I work in our program building where they um, do classes and stuff. Um, I work in the library and I help paint. You have a, a high school diploma or GED? Yes, sir. Which one? A GED. What age were you when you dropped out of high school? What, what, what class? Uh, I was in the 10th grade. I obtained my GED when I was 16. Why did you drop out of school? Um, I was having a lot of problems um, drinking and stuff like that as a teenager, and I had skipped a lot of school. I was getting in trouble in school, and I dropped out, and I went to the Youth Challenge Program, where I graduated as a five-star cadet at the top of my class. That sounds good, but what happened? Um... I, I was good after that. I actually joined the military um, when I was 17. I uh, got married and I moved to California. How long were you in the military? I was for four years active and two inactive. Okay. So you moved to California? Yes, sir. And um, I was actually doing really good. My ex-husband was also in the military. And then... Um, when my father passed away in the BP oil spill in 2010, um, I got a early discharge and we, we ended up moving back. And um, he got out of the Navy also. And um, that's kind of where my life kind of started to get a little rocky. Um, I Maybe a lot uh, rocky. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, over a, a three or four year time span, um, my pain pill addiction got very out of hand. Um, none of my family knew about it. So all the lying and the secretive and the conniving manipulation, I, I, I feel bad for, you know, it was just, I, I didn't know how to ask for help. I didn't know how to cope. I knew nothing about addiction either. We don't have any of that in my family. So, um, by the time that we put me in rehab at Edgefield in um, Bunky, Louisiana, it was just by that time I had done committed bank fraud and it was just, I had made my life a mess. And it, looking back, I'm better than that and I was raised better than that. 
Okay. Uh, of course, you have uh, some uh, you know, some sex offender charges. Tell me about that. Um, when I got charged with that, I was out of rehab for about two weeks. Um, I had my daughter. I was staying with my ex husband, and I I relapsed. Um, I had some marital issues going on, even though it's not an excuse. Me just running away from my problems. I I went off the deep end. I relapsed. Um, I, me and my mother got into it. Um, she was very upset in my relapse. Of course, I've heard a lot of people in that. And she told me I was not going to see my kids again. And then three days later is when I was arrested with the indecent behavior sex charges on my daughter. So were you, did, you, did you plead to those charges or did you go to trial on those charges? Um, I took a plea deal. They wanted my lawyer tried to make a split docket, um, Mr. Rob Malone, but they denied it. They wanted to put all my charges on one docket. So they they dropped because I had originally four counts of bank fraud and um, they had ended up dropping it down to one. And I kept the possession charge and then they they dropped uh, two other sex charges related to that. And they put it all on one thing and offered me probation. Me being in trouble, I, I look. I wish I would have fought it. Um, I, I didn't know what to do. I just wanted to get home. You know. Sure. I mean, that's that's a tough thing. But you know, when you plead to something, you plead guilty to it, right? Yes, sir. I pled guilty to the bank fraud and possession and a no contest to the sex charge. Well, we know what a no contest plea is. Yes, sir. What have you been doing? What kind of work you've been doing while you've been in the facility? What what kind of have you taken sex offender treatment class? Have you taken any classes in general? What have you been doing for three days? Um, I um I have taken the sex offender class, the phase one, two, three, and four, and okay. graduated. Okay. Um, I've taken long term substance abuse, which is a year long substance abuse class. What you took it there where you yes. are? Yes, sir. Everything has been at uh, LTCW. Okay. Um, I've also taken a life healing choices class, which is a um, religion class that kind of it kind of goes with like celebrate recovery in a way, but it's a little shorter. And um, I've completed living in balance. And I've also took a parenting class. And anger management also. Okay. So you've done some work. Yes, sir. What, uh, now, of course, I did see you have poor supervision. You, you were out on supervision several times and, and didn't register, got in trouble, the whole work. It was just while you were still going through your addiction? Yes, sir. And um, I, yes, sir. And what was your drug of choice? Uh, it was uh, pain pills, but I also dabbled in methamphetamines. And were you married at the time? Uh, I was going through a divorce. So if you were to uh, be released early, what would you do? Where would you go? What would you do? Miss um, Kim Jean um, uh, is my mother-in-law. I got married again. I remarried. Um, she um, she's actual prior law enforcement for uh, Leesville Sheriff's Office. Um, it's a very safe environment. They own their own um, business, processing meats and things. And um, I, I would start out working there. Um, I also want to go back and try to see the Edgefield Recovery because they have an outpatient program that's four days a week um, that I know my insurance would accept and everything. And um, definitely get a mental health evaluation. Um, also, I got on antidepressants in here. I feel like that's helped me a lot and also learning coping skills in the substance abuse program. I kind of know what my triggers are now and why I use. Um, so the victims in this this crime were your, was your daughter? Yes, sir. So what's, what's your plans to, uh, I mean, that's obviously going to be some problems when you get out some hurdles to overcome. Yes, sir. Um, I've actually got with Dr. Wheeler. She works at the facility here. And um, we're going to try to see if there's any way um, like supervision can can take place or anything like that. We're going to try to do a um, 
a mental health evaluation with Dr. Tucker out of Shreveport to kind of see it tells you whether like a sex offender is going to reoffend and and things like that. So we had looked into that to try to to try to help me. How many children do you have? I have two. I have a, a little boy and a little girl. And so, um, have, have you had any disciplinary rights? I'll ask the question. Uh, uh, yes, sir. When was uh, the last time you had that? Uh, December 18th of 2017. What was that for? A dirty urine. And what was it positive for? Uh, BUP for Suboxone. And that was obviously before you took all these classes, I suspect? Yes, sir. It was right after I, I, I took my time and everything. And that, that's not an excuse. I just, I, I finally got to act right after that. <laughs> How old are you? I just turned 30. Okay. Well, you know, you have some, we're move here today for some people for you and someone to get you. You have significant opposition. Uh, not only from uh, from victims, but also from law enforcement. There's not much you can do about that, but you need to be aware of that. Yes, sir. All right, I have no further questions. Does staff have... Yes, sir, just a second. I'm not Okay. All right, Kayla was correct. She has taken multiple classes here. Completed them without any problems. Um, she has, you know, her, when she first started, her tiger was a high, it's moved to a moderate due to. Moderate, yes. um, she actually works for me. Um, I knew her when she got here and she was a problem <laughs> child, a little. Um, now she has made drastic changes in her ways of thinking and what she wants to do and how she wants to proceed with her sobriety. So she has made positive changes since she's been here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's all the questions I have. Did you answer Mr. Tony Marabella? Curtis, how are you today? I'm doing all right, how are you, sir? I'm doing fine. Uh, I've got some some questions. It, it, it looks like, uh, I guess I'll kind of walk through a little bit of what you were talking about. Uh, you had some problems early on drinking. When did you start drinking? Um, when I was probably about 13. Okay. And how did that start? Um, just me and my mother have had a very rocky relationship um i've suffered i've lost a lot of family and i think that was just my way of coping and it was easy to sneak in my mom's house and it was, was just there crazy. alcohol available in your mother's house yes sir who drank in your mother's house my mother okay she drank a lot no sir not a lot it was just more more socially and how old were you when you went to the Youth Challenge program? I was 15 when I first went and turned 16. Okay. And how long did you stay in that program? Uh, I completed it. It is uh, six months long. Okay. And you completed the program and you talked about graduating with honors and such. And you yes. joined the military. What branch of the military were you in? I was in the Army National Guard. I was uh, military police officer. Where did you spend your time? At Camp Beauregard okay. in Pineville. And were you honorably discharged? Uh, they put me other than honorable. Okay. And that's where you met your husband? Uh, yes, sir. I, I, I knew him from high school, but uh, with the same he's town. The father, he's the father of your daughter? Yes, sir. Okay. Who's the father of the boy? Same man. 
Same man? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Did you lose custody? I mean, did you lose parental rights of your children as a result of this? I That's something I'm actually not 100% positive on because I never went to court for it. I only went to criminal court for the charges. Okay. You don't know what happened with child services or anything mm -hmm. else? No, sir, because I was actually um, arrested and, and went to jail. How old is your daughter now? She, she just turned 10 this past January. She's about to turn 11. Okay. Tell me how you progressed from drinking to, to the sex charges. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm reading that they found pornography in your phone and your computer and such. How did you progress to that? Um, well, there was only adult pornography in my phone. There was no, it was nothing to do with her. Um, the pornography that they found was something between me and my husband at the time. Mm -hmm. So that was nothing to do with any indecency. It was a, a marital thing. Um, but the, the drinking, uh, I did good for a while, but my pill and drug habits is, it was after my dad died and it's just, I had a miscarriage also, then my papa died. There was a lot going on and I, it was just the only coping way I knew to, to fix things. And it, it got extremely out of hand. Let me ask you this. What, what have you learned in your sex offender classes that you've gone through that might help you understand what it is you did and why you did it? Um, daughter, I'm talking about. Yes, sir. Um, in the sex offender course, they have uh, what they call risk factors, and there's 27 of them. And um, I feel like learning those and you learn how um, you have triggers and mind altering substances is one of the risk factors that you learn about. So I feel like maybe the the risk factors from my substance abuse class and the sex offender class kind of coincide and that's how I related with them. And I know what lines I can cross and in, in my sobriety, I feel like led to everything. So I feel like if I keep my sobriety unchecked, everything else will, will fall into place correctly. What have you learned about yourself personally that will convince me that it would be safe to let you out and not offend again with either your daughter, if you ever get to see her again, or any other minor child? What, what would make me, what have you learned about yourself that would make me and the other members of this board comfortable in realizing that if we let you out, this isn't gonna happen again? I'm sorry. I've learned that I majorly dropped the ball as a mother. I am too pre I'm supposed to protect my children and not cause them any harm. And I've realized that I, I extremely I dropped the ball on that. And I feel that knowing um what situation I, I know what situations not to put myself in and in, in lines that I'm not allowed to cross, I, I realized that I'm sorry, I apologize. It's all right. I, I, I can't put myself in situations to cause to cause my kids harm. I, I do love my children. I don't, I don't, um, I don't look at kids that way. You know, I want, children are safe around me. I don't want y'all to think that I'm, I'm sick like that or anything. I, I know what's right and wrong. I, I just really feel like I've grown and bettered myself. And I, I just want the opportunity to show y'all that. Well, I, I guess I guess my, my question is, and my concern is this, uh, oftentimes in, in my experience over the years in the, in the criminal justice system, people have a disease, they're sick, 
they have a mental illness that require that causes them to 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 do certain things i'm trying to figure out what caused you to do this or at least what is it that you understand caused you to do this to 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 make me feel comfortable it's not likely to happen again well that's why um me and dr wheeler had had a talk that um the dr tucker out of shreveport we were going to do a um i'm not sure what it's called uh, a risk assessment for uh only sex offenders and it's a uh, evaluation that they give me that it backs up it's almost like a personality assessment she said and um it shows you like it gives them i guess results of the chances of me reoffending or not um i know we do you do you worry about reoffending um not sexually no sir no sir what do you worry about reoffending um the 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 drug addiction you know it it bothers me but that's why i wanted to get in the edge field and make sure like i do three or four a day uh iop program it's intensive um and then in between there you know go to my meetings and everything now you went to Edgefield when? Um, right before I caught these charges. It was in 14, the end of 14, I want to say, like August, September. And um, when you say right before you caught these charges, was it before you committed these offenses or was it before you were found out of that? Well, actually the timeline, my mother said that my daughter told her that I touched her while it, while I was at rehab in September because I, then I was also arrested. I was arrested October 1st for the sex charges. And I was at rehab for the half end of August and all through September. And while I was gone, she said that's when my daughter had made that statement. But then when I came home from rehab, she let me have my kids for two weeks and never said anything until after me and her got in an argument. She never told my husband about it. She never told, like the father of the children was never aware of this or anything. So the charges were, were a surprise. But I'll say that. I think that's all the questions I have, but Mr. Chairman, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Jones. Do you have any questions? Kayla. Yes, sir. So are you denying those accusations? Have you come to grips with that? Are you denying it that it happened? No, sir. I'm just, I've tried to deal with guilt because I'm scared that maybe like me so in my addiction had crossed the line with my daughter when I, when I shouldn't have done that. I was supposed to protect her. And it's just like, I've tried to deal with the fact that was I so high that something happened, that something happened, you know, it, that's, that's what scares me. So, so you're saying, uh, do your addiction, addiction, this may have happened when you were out of control. Yes, sir. And don't, and you don't remember it. it that's been a thought. Yes, sir. What brought on the relationship, the bad relationship between you and your mother? What, what, what's that all about? Um, it's just been me and my mom have never had a positive relationship since I was a child. Um, been how, how old were you when your father got killed in BP? Um, I was 20. 20? Yes, sir. But this relationship between you and your mother started bad uh, before then, right? Yes, sir. And I actually, um, when I was pregnant with my daughter, because I had just had her in January of 2020, uh, 2010, um, we had not been talking for the longest time and we had just started talking. And then when my dad died, I feel like I, we were trying to make an effort to make it work. That's the only parent I had left. Um, me and my mom, um, I had got a settlement. I had gave her some money. And um, I also was popping pain pills with my mother. Um, you said with your mother? Yes, sir. Um, she was not that off like I was. Mine got out of hand. Um, 
So when I got out of rehab, you know, I just felt like I wanted her to do good too. And I, she thought I was trying to keep my children from her and I wasn't, I just, How old were you when you first had the first child? Uh, I was 20 years old, sir. 20? Yes, sir. Were you abused uh, anything at a young, younger age? Then the 13, I think you say you started with the drinking and everything. What, did something happen or to cause you to go that route? My mom tends to be a little physical. Um, she was a little rough. But um, as far as like sexual abuse, as I, I'm assuming you're talking about, no, sir. That's right. That's right. No, sir, I have not. You've never been sexually abused or anything? No, sir. Yeah. Have you uh, had mental health evaluation? Um, I, like when I first got here, uh, I had like talked to a doctor, not like a full official evaluation by anybody other than like when I was in rehab, but I got on antidepressants here, but they really didn't evaluate me for it. But that's why uh, Dr. Wheeler wanted to do that personality assessment um, to kind of evaluate my mental, my mental health. You know, you, you've done a lot of good things at a young age. Uh, you went to YCP. Um, went to the military. So something, I don't know what, what happened and what went wrong. Um, have you really looked in the mirror and looked at yourself and really took, take a look at yourself to see? Yes, sir. I just, I, what I have come to realize, I had a lot of grief I was going through. Um, I lost my grandma, my uncle, my daddy, and then my papa, and I also had a miscarriage in between all of that. I had no kind of coping skills. And when I just realized one day popping a pill, just it seemed like it made everything better, you know? Um, but when you, when, when you sobered up the problem, you're yeah, there. Yes, sir. It, it, and if not worse. Um, in my addiction, when it got very bad, because um, I got clean, and then after I had my son, I had relapsed. And it was just like, I spun out of control, and it happened so fast. Well, I just want you to know that, you know, at 30 years old, you have a lot to overcome. I mean, your, your criminal record, your people against you, you got a lot to overcome. You got a lot yes, to sir. do to prove yourself. But I want you to know that you can do it, and but it's going to be work. For you yes, sir. Yes, That's sir. all the questions I have, uh, Mr. Chairman. That's good. All right, thank you. Now we're here from Miss uh, Kim Jean. Go ahead and take your mute off, please. Your mute button. There you go. How are you okay, today? Go ahead. Give a brief statement. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, my name is Kim Jean. Kayla is my daughter-in-law. Um, uh, when she gets out, she will also be my employee. I have a processing center here at my home. Kayla has been around my grandbabies and my great grandbabies. Um, I would trust her with my life. Um, being prior law enforcement, there's not anything I haven't seen. There's not anything I haven't heard. There's not anything that I haven't dealt with. Um, I've investigated sex crimes, pedophiles, drug addiction, um, you name it, I've seen it. And if anyone has, has overcome and will continue to overcome, it is Kayla. Um, all I can tell you is that she is an amazing young woman. She's been through a lot. Our family has been through a lot. If anybody has worked hard and will continue to work hard, it is my baby girl. All right. Thank you so much.
You're welcome. Thank you. Now we'll hear from uh, Mr. Win Miss Wendy Johnson. Take the mute off, Miss Wendy. Can you hear me? We can. We can hear you now. I don't Go know ahead. why there's no video. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, maybe, I, the, I do... maybe the video is turned off. It's okay. We can hear you. Okay. Um, thank you for uh, wait. starting the video. Thank you for having me today. Um, I do have a letter here that um, I have wrote out, but since I have um, been listening to Kayla, um, I just want to clarify some things. But I'm going to go ahead and read this letter first that I wrote, and then I'm going to address some stuff. Uh, yeah, to just you guys. Yeah, speak to the board. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hello, my name is Wendy Johnson. I am the mother of Kayla Curtis. I am here today to give my statement on reasons why Kayla should remain in custody and have her parole denied. For starters, this has not been a one-time incident or even a second that resulted in Kayla being arrested and ultimately going to prison. Throughout Kayla's life, she has made four choices. She has left plenty of victims in her path with a good majority of them being her family on both sides, mine and her father's. Kayla has repeatedly shown throughout her life that she only cares about herself and what she has shown, wait, care about herself, I'm sorry. So bad. Throughout her life that she only cares about herself and what that moment can offer. The behavior and choices which landed Kayla in prison started early in her teenage years and only got worse. I, along with the rest of her family, tried everything we knew to get her to a better place and make choices and continue to stand by her through each event. But each event got worse and went further than the last. Whew. There have been many times throughout Kayla's life that I believe she had turned a corner and would do good to make choices and to lead a productive life, but it never, never happened. There was the time she went to jumpstart as a teenager, the time she got her GED, the time she enlisted in the military, and the time she got married and started a family. All really good moments in her personal, in a person's life. But each and every moment was destroyed by Kayla's lies, deceit, theft, and many more bad choices. Choices that had negative consequences to the family members and her close friends. Just a few examples are to mention. When she got on leave through military, she took $2,800 out of her grandmother's jewelry box. Then she repeatedly stole her uncle's new truck, causing damage each time when she wasn't even old enough to legally drive. When she repeatedly broke into her uncle's home to steal guns, money, jewelry, or anything else that she could pawn for money when she stole and cast checks against my account, leaving me penniless while I was out of the country with my family. As you can see, these are not small indiscretions. These are just a few examples of her bad choices with really big consequences and victims. But none of what I have said so far compares to the pure evil that allowed her to molest her three-year-old daughter. This act alone should keep her behind bars for a very long time. The devastation of, the, of this unspeakable act was caused so much damage to Natalie's beautiful, beautiful soul. Throughout, Natalie was young, uh, although she was young, when, when she was made to suffer at the hands of her own mother, it, is a, it has affected her to the point that she will carry this for the rest of her life. While counseling, has helped her for three years. The idea that her mother is behind bars and not able to hurt her anymore is what gives Natalie the strength and reassurance she needs as a 10 year old. I believe that when a person is truly remorseful for that what she has done to others, they reach out and try to make amends. Those are really what a right, a wrong, make for efforts when there is nothing to gain for themselves. Kayla has not made one attempt to right her wrongs. She has failed to apologize to her grandmother, her uncles, me, and numerous other victims for her crimes. 
Instead, Kayla used the money from the sale of her home with her ex-husband to go on a shopping spree. She got plastic surgery, bought more drugs. Kayla's, Kayla's only in custody today because the US Marshals had to hunt her down with her new husband as a fugitive. She had no inclination, inclination to become a better person even after being given the opportunity of probation after the horrendous plea deal for molesting her daughter. And even if she is a model prisoner while in custody, it's not because she has been rehabilitated. It is because she has structure and it is required to live by and abide by rules. This is a prime example that follows her past behaviors. While in a structured environment, she can thrive and possibly be productive, but let, but let left her on her own, she robs, rapes, and pillages. It is very hard for a mother to feel this way about her only child. My life experiences with Kayla hurts my soul. But there is no part of me that believes Kayla has been rehabilitated in this short time. Her life choices are habitual and have been so far for, for longer than her short time in custody. Kayla does not have the family network needed to truly succeed because she has burned every bridge, destroyed every relationship, and has not atoned to her evil deeds on both sides of her family, her dad's side and mine. If she is really doing well enough to even be considered for parole at such an early time, then the system is working like it should and she should remain in that environment that is beneficial to her, which is in custody. I would like to close by saying, I hope that Kayla continues to get help I pray that someday Kayla is remorseful and rehabilitated so that she can go on to live a better life, abide by our laws and be productive in her society. But today is not that day. I respectfully ask you to consider the many victims when making your decision. If you want to help Kayla, then maintain her custody and keep her in a structured environment. All right, and that's all. Thank, all right thank you. Um, there is some things I do want to classify, though. Um, okay, her, uh, look, very, look, very briefly, very briefly. You, it's limited on time, but briefly make a, make finish your Okay, state. well, well I, I just want to say the, 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 when uh, Natalie informed me of what happened to her, it was not when she was in rehab. She was out, um, and we took her two days later to the sheriff's office where Kayla, uh, where Natalie told the, everybody and was was put into CPS custody. Kayla did lose custody of both of her kids. And um, oh, I, I guess that's what I want okay. to say. Okay. Um, and I did not have a pill problem. I've been a paramedic in EMS um, all my life, almost for 30 years. I've had off and on early on several years ago where if I got broke my foot or my hand and had had pain pills, but I have never failed a drug test and I do not abuse. All right. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. You're welcome. All right. All right, Kayla, would you like to make a statement on your behalf before the panel votes? Can you make a statement? Yeah, you can make a statement to the board. Yes, sir. I, I know it seems like I thrive in a structured environment. It's because I'm sober and I can make the decisions. I, I, I am very remorseful for what has happened to my daughter. I feel like my addiction feeds off that too. That's why I have taken these classes to try to learn why I have these problems, why I have addiction. And I feel that if given the chance, I can I can show people how I have how I can thrive in the free world also. I I do have good morals and I know I have hurt a lot of people through my addiction and I apologize for that. I never made an effort to contact my mother or anybody because they threatened to call the law on me if I did. Um, I just want to, I, I just want to tell her because I know she's listening. I really am sorry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, is the panel prepared to vote? 
I am. Okay. Uh, Kayla, we uh, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for your honesty. Uh, you know, listen, I listened. Uh, I've gone through your file back and forth. Uh, you know, it's a significant uh, uh, criminal past. I mean, you definitely have, like, like uh, Mr. Jones says, there's some things you're going to have to overcome uh, when you do, when you are released, whether that be early or your good time, whatever it is, I think your good times in 2023. Uh, and, and you've done a lot of good work. Uh, you know, you have done a lot of good work. You've shown in a structured environment. And you're right. You, in a structured environment, you've shown how you've been able to flourish. You've also, you know, and you said it. You're right. You're in a structured environment because you're, and you're not using. The question is, is what if you get back out and start using, right? That's always the concern. It's just the, the, the community safety aspect for us. It's, it's the work that you've done. And, 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 you know, just this is me talking. Yes, sir. I believe you. I, I believe what you're saying. I believe. I believe you. Uh, I really believe you. I believe you've done a, a lot of really good things. And, and you know, have you turned the corner? You know, you're getting there. But there's there is a, a lot of a lot of chaos that you've got to fix when you do get out. And and and, and you know, listen, you can do it. You're 30 years old. It's not like you. It's, it's not like you're you're 80 years old. Not that you're going to be an 80, but it's not. Like you have plenty of time. Yes, sir. To, to 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 make things right. So you you know you don't ever give up on that, and, and you, it's going to be some work for me. For me, and again, I I believe you. I believe the hard work you've done, but the the nature of the crimes, the the fact that you have significant opposition, every law enforcement agency, you have a moderate tiger score, which is improving. And I see you, you know, you are a prime example of somebody that's just getting right there. And I believe you will be re released early. But today, I can't support you for early release. My vote would be to deny you, and I would encourage you to continue what you're doing. I, again, I believe you. Uh, but there's still more work to do is what I believe in, in, in what's going on. And, and, and I think you're well aware of that and understand that. Uh, but I do believe you, and I want you to know that. But my vote today is deny for those reasons, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Marabella. Caleb, uh, I've listened very intently to everything that I've heard here today. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a sad day when a mother speaks out against her daughter getting out of prison. Uh, I don't know, frankly, how to take all of that. I accept what your mother had to say from her perspective. Uh, I, I think that you've had a very tough childhood. A lot of things have happened to you. Some of the things that happened to you probably weren't your fault, especially in those early years that formed whatever behaviors or whatever issues that you currently have. It's very clear to me that you have a drug and an alcohol problem. And it's clear to me that you're working on those things. I might be willing to take a chance today in spite of everything that I've heard from the opposition uh, about what you've done and who you are, if it weren't for the fact that this involves a child molesting charge. Uh, I know you, you, you don't concede that you really meant to do that, but clearly you did it. You even know in your own heart that you did it, whether it was drugs, whether it was alcohol, whatever it was. And that's a really difficult thing for me to, to be able to come to grips with today. It looks like you're on the right track. You have taken a lot of sex offender courses. You answered my questions about what have you learned? What have you learned about yourself? You've explained those things to me. You indicate that you're going to get with Dr. Tucker. Y'all going to come up with a plan. I think that is a wonderful route to go. Uh, I, like uh, Mr. Kelsey, believe you to be honest today. I believe you were very truthful to us. Uh, I believe you told us what your issues are. Uh, I want to encourage you to continue on the path that you are going. Hopefully, you may be able to uh, repair or heal some of the relationships you've had with your 
family members. Maybe you won't be able to. Maybe you will just have to live an independent life, but hopefully one clean and sober and law abiding. Uh, I'm not prepared today to vote to parole you. I could very well be prepared to vote to parole you at some future time if you continue down the path that you're going. So my vote today would be to deny, but I would encourage you to continue to do the things that you are doing now. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Mr. Jones. Hey, well, I don't know if there's anything else I could add to what Mr. Kelsey and Mr. Marbella have said. They've covered everything that I'm thinking myself. Um, your new husband, how many times have you been married? Two. Two, your new husband. Yes, sir. What kind of work does he do? He works offshore. Well, he, he works in the oil industry. He's on a land rig, not an offshore rig, but the yeah. oil industry. So many days on and so many off. Yes, sir. Yeah. How did you meet him? Um, through, he's also a recovering addict. Um, but he is doing very well and he is, he's been sober a while. Um, he was on probation also um, for drugs, but he has completely turned his life around. But I, I had met him in that. So if you were to be released, y'all gonna have to be a support system for each other. Yes, sir. Yeah. And that can, and that can work. Yes. Um, you know, I don't, I, I'm, I'm like, Mr. Kelsey and Mr. Marvello, you know, I, I believe you, to, I think you have been totally honest here today with your true feelings and everything, but I think you need just a little more time. I, I think you need a little more time and whenever you um, can apply to come back before the board again, I don't know how long she'll have to wait, um, but whenever you come back, um, I, I could see myself voting differently but my day my vote today would be to deny yes sir thank you good all luck right, to Kay you. all right kaylee you have three votes to deny your parole very positive remarks keep working hard there might be something uh different next time but you have three votes to deny today your parole's been denied thank you thank you don't uh, mute it I don't know. I don't know why the board kept saying she was being honest. I don't know why they were just like feeding into her. I, I I don't get that part. In my opinion, she was not being honest. She was in denial about what she had done to her daughter from the beginning. She said it over and over and over. First it was, well, I pled no contest. Well, I don't know. And then slowly it started to unravel. Maybe that's what it meant by her being honest, that at least she got to some point of saying, well, maybe something happened to my daughter. And it's like, Nothing happened to your daughter. You did it to your daughter. I'm sorry that it happened. And then, you know, Mr. Mirabella is right. It is a sad day when a mother has to say, but at the same time, maybe it's not a sad day. Maybe it's a day we've all been waiting for. Aren't we tired of mothers always coming up and praising their monster children? Doesn't it maybe take someone with a little bit of awareness to say, she should not be near my grandchildren? Doesn't it take a real mother to stand up and protect those who can't be protected? You know, it, it, it may, <laughs> how many hearings have we heard? Have we ever heard a mother stand up for the most vulnerable? And I get it. You might say, well, she could have worded things differently. She could have maybe focused less on financial aspect. You know, she was going into every little bit. There was a lot of pent up. She's been waiting a long time to say this. And and I hear things like that. And it's it, it, it didn't look like a healthy relationship and all that stuff. But still, the bottom line is, is she wrong? It takes a certain amount of courage, you can argue, to stand up and say, you know, it's better for her to be locked up. It takes a little bit of, of, of backbone, something that Louisiana district attorneys 
don't know much about, something that the judges don't know much about, something that the parole board seems to sometimes forget. Imagine if it was the father that does this to a three-year-old. You'd think, you'd hope they'd be singing a different tune. You know, I can call her out on a certain amount of lies that she did in this hearing that I took notes on. And maybe maybe you've heard others that I miss. I often miss. She goes in her opening statement. She says, I don't know how to cope with addiction. None of that runs in my family. She's saying that her addiction problem, that part of why she doesn't know how to cope with it is that none of it runs in her family. She then goes later on to say, I'm popping pills with my mother. I believe her mother that she didn't have, doesn't have an addiction problem. But I just wanted to point out that inconsistency. It was like the first chance that she could get to try to throw her mother under the bus. She goes and takes it. To her credit, when she said, well, I started drinking, I, you know, it was my mother's alcohol. They said, well, does she have a drinking problem? She didn't say that her mother did. Okay. okay well, I'll give her some credit. At least she didn't lie about that. Then the next huge red flag. They ask her, well, did you lose your parental rights with your children? And she says, I have no idea. I, I've been locked up. And it's like, really? You, you And the board, you're just going to take that? You're saying that it, there's, no, there's no way that her answer is good in this scenario. Either she completely doesn't care about her kids, where she actually spends zero time to find out if she lost her parental rights. Or she's lying that she that she knows that she had lost, you know, about losing her parental rights. But the very idea that you would even say that, I mean, she she she's an habitual liar. From what I can take it from this hearing. And manipulative. These are the the scariest roaches when they come in the form of a 30-year-old woman who just, you know. We're talking about her own daughter. Then they say, oh, they found the, the, the images on her phone. And she so easily said, oh, no, that, that was just marital stuff. And it's like, really? You know. The parole board, for whatever, didn't dig deeper in it. Maybe they didn't have clear records. But we have seen enough of these hearings to know that don't just let a roach come get away with an excuse. If you let them, they will. They'll make an excuse and go with it. And how many times have we had the research to say they're lying? They're lying. The board didn't call them out. But this is what really happened. And why would, you know, unless it was some type of violation of her probation, I don't know why it would be mentioned. Oh, yeah, there's an, a naked image of myself. <laughs> well, let's put that in the report. You know, the mother comes in and to set the record straight that it didn't happen just once. It didn't happen just twice. This was something that continuously happened. A th your three-year-old biological daughter and what it seems to me from what i understand is that a judge only gave her probation what got her locked up was the bank fraud and the schedule two but she had only gotten probation she pled down Let's see. She 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 pled down. They pled down from sexual battery, aggravated incense to to just a, a molestation of a juvenile charge. This weak DA and the mother alluded to that. She said she said a garbage plea deal. It's just. It's just unreal. And she has a record of just failing her other than dishonor honorable discharge. Read between the lines what that means. 
then you always have this. I mean, roaches, they flock, you know, they, they, they actually they flock together. They scurry together. They, they run around together. And she has her, 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 her new mo her mother-in-law that states, I was law enforcement. I, you know, I trust her with my children and my grandchildren. She's a wonderful, she's a special person. She's, I would trust her with my life. She has been around babies and my grandbabies. And it's like, first of all, she's been locked up. And before she was locked up, she was stealing. This is These are known facts. She was on meth. These are known facts. She molested her daughters. So under what preface can you come here and even utter those words? You are talking about someone who is the poster child that you can never have around your children, that you can never have around your grandchildren, that you have would want nothing to do with. Throw away the idea that she's guilty of molesting her three-year-old child. Throw that away. Just simply with the charges that she has before she got locked up would make her the most and, and here she is, vouching for her, singing like she's the next greatest thing. The most amazing, you know, the next Mother Teresa. And when you see stuff like that, it, it just, the contrast, the difference between her and her real mother, you couldn't get. You couldn't have a bigger difference. I'm like struggling with finding my words this morning. You really couldn't. It's it's two opposites. And if I, I think if you want to look at those two opposites, it's one that is just completely in denial. I would say not to a fault, but to a danger, to a danger, or an actual literal danger to her grandbabies and babies and anyone who she brings her around. And then you have on the other side, the biological mother that did seem to be frustrated, but is saying it as it is. And who comes first? Her grandbaby. And I, for that, salute you, mother. You have something unique that we have never seen before. I think we've only seen one relative speak in a way where they wanted the person to remain locked up, um, who showed up in support. This was the first article. If you see here, it's it's uh, 2014. It's written, Pineville woman is facing three sex-related charges after investigation into the mistreatment of a juvenile. According to the Rhapsody Parish Office, a complaint was received on Monday. Uh, with the detectives began their investigation on Tuesday and the victim was interviewed and I can't scroll down because there shows addresses, but in a nutshell, they interviewed the, the baby. They did the thorough research and homework and, uh, and they proved it to be accurate, but you fast forward just one year and what she's, you know, it's, it's 2015 instead of 2014 and a Pineville woman already in jail, on multiple charges of bank fraud, as well as other charges was arraigned on Thursday for two more charges related to stolen checks. So, I don't know. It's uh, I guess exactly what this means, but I guess they just brought more charges for stolen checks. Um, but you don't, and other charges, they don't talk about the main charge and the DAs, the weak DAs. It's like they, they just have the no, the no contest that she pleads to instead of, but she, she's on the sex offender offender registry is a tier one. Um, at least they got that out of it. But overall, she gets probation, and then all she gets is, what What was it, seven years for doing that? How do you get? It's, it's like they just don't care. They don't care. And uh, she is out. She got released. And thank you again, Richard. She got released. Um, 
not on parole, but just for doing all of her time. Uh, which was interesting. I don't know why they kept bringing up that, oh, you'll come back for parole. I guess she didn't even want to deal with coming back for parole. She just took her time. She got released in November of 2023. So three years after this hearing date. She did her full sentence. Yep, she got out November 17, 2023. And um, will we see her again? I wouldn't be surprised. And if we do, we'll we'll show her here. We will show her here. But some of the stuff, if you didn't see it, you wouldn't believe it. Roaches come in all shapes and sizes. And we just watched a dangerous one, in my opinion. And with that, 